Before Hermes was one of the most famous luxury clothing brands on the planet, it was actually created by a young half-German, half-French designer who started his career making harnesses for horses. His story is certainly one of a kind and almost unbelievable. From nothing, he created the brand Hermes, which is now worth an incredible $3.5 billion. Born in Krefeld, Germany on January 10, 1801, to a German mother and a French father, Thierry's young life was anything but easy. During his early years, the Napoleonic Wars hit Europe, and many of his family members died in battle and from disease. However, these hardships changed his life forever in more ways than one as his parents decided to move what was left of the family to Paris for a better life in 1828. Once he had moved to Paris, Thierry almost immediately got a job in a leather manufacturing workshop. From the age of 27 to 36, he worked tirelessly to expand his understanding of the industry and learn as much as he could. But the young entrepreneur really wanted to strike out on his own, and in 1837 he did just that by opening his first workshop in the Grands Boulevard's quarter of Paris. Hermès's first leather shop created high-class, high-quality harnesses for the country's elite noblemen. These harnesses and bridles used for carriage horses were not only essential for travel, but they were also a way to show one's wealth with beautiful and well-made pieces. Interestingly, what many loved about Thierry's leather harnesses and bridles was that they were simple and lightweight. The designer was not swept up by the current trends, but instead created pieces that everyone would love and could use for years to come. His designs were so beloved that he won several awards for them, the first in 1855 and again in 1867 at the Expositions Universelles in Paris. As well as being critically acclaimed, his first leather shop in Paris was an amazing financial success and Thierry became quite a wealthy man. When Thierry died in 1878, he left his successful harness business to his son, Charles Emile. Charles Emile's first order of business when he began running the Hermes family business was to move the shop to a more centralized location within Paris. And even more importantly, he started focusing on selling their products not just to the Parisian elite, but also to those all over the world, including Russia, the Americas, North Africa, and the rest of Europe. In addition to his impressive marketing skills, Charles Emile was also an impeccable designer, just as his father was. In fact, it was Charles Emile who designed and created the first bag by Hermès, the Hot à Courroies. The bag was made in order to allow riders to carry their saddles with them. However, as well as being practical, the bag was seriously stylish and quickly became the bag to have around the world. By 1902, with more than three decades as the head of the company, Charles Emile decided it was time to pass the torch once again and bequeathed the company to his two sons, Adolf and Emile Maurice. The two young but smart brothers decided to rename the company Hermès Frères or Hermès Brothers. While the business was already extremely well established around the world by the brothers' father and grandfather, the two did not rest on what already was, but instead pushed forward to create something new and improve the family business even more. One of the most important changes the brothers made was in the patent and use of what is now known as the zipper. Emile Maurice saw the zipper when traveling in Canada, and he brought the idea back to France and got a patent for it. By the 1910s, Hermès was the only company in the country producing bags and clothes with these handy fasteners. The zipper itself made Hermès even more famous than it was before, and in fact, the first zippers in Europe were often called Hermès zippers. As well as making their way into the fashion industry, the Hermès brothers continued creating some of the world's most sought-after saddles, harnesses, and bridles. The Tsar of Russia at the time even had Hermès make his personal saddle. However, as we know, with the invention of the engine and the drastic change in transportation in the early 1900s, the need for harnesses, saddles, and so on was about to decline drastically. During the 1910s, Adolf decided to leave the family business. 
However, by this time, the brothers had already hired three of their sons-in-law, Robert Dumas Hermes, Jean-René Guerin, and Francis Puick, to help Emile continue running the company. With the help of the three young men, Emile Maurice ensured the Hermes business continued to thrive and adjust to the needs of the current market. With the decline of the need for equine goods, the Hermes brand turned its attention to the fashion industry. Of course, it wasn't their first attempt, as they had already successfully created several bags and some clothing. And in 1924, Hermes opened two stores in the United States and immediately began designing for the masses. By 1925, Emile was completely engulfed in designing clothing and created a men's ready-to-wear line, including leather handbags and the famous golf jacket. The team continued to push the envelope on what they could create and by 1927 had added jewelry to their line. Then, only one year later, they introduced watches and shoes. In 1929, the first women's couture apparel collection was previewed in Paris, and by the 1930s, Hermes products were considered the height of luxury fashion and were being worn by the world's rich and famous. During this time, Hermes would produce silk scarves, men's ties, and perfumes as well, all of which were well received by their clientele. In 1951, the great and talented Emile Maurice Hermès passed away, but the brand was far from finished. For the three sons-in-law who had been working under Emile, it was now their time to shine. It was agreed that Robert Dumas Hermès would become the next head of the company, and as he was the first generation to run the show who wasn't a direct descendant of the great Thierry Hermès, the pressure was certainly on. However, it was soon clear that Robert's role in the Hermes brand would only improve the already impressive company. Not only did Robert create the famous horse and carriage logo that is still used today, but he also designed several items, such as the Kelly bag, that continued to propel the business into wild financial success. Interestingly, Robert had actually designed the bag in the 1930s, but when famous actress Grace Kelly famously wore the bag in 1956, the Hermes stores were suddenly filled to the brim with women looking to purchase the Kelly bag. Some say that this moment is what made Hermes so beloved by the masses, not just the noblemen and women or the elite of the world. Through the 60s and 70s, Hermes continued to be one of the biggest names in luxury fashion. However, their price tags were considered extremely high especially as other companies began to use synthetic materials to create their designs and could, therefore, set them at a much lower price point. By 1978, Hermes was struggling to stay financially viable. They spent a great deal of money on all-natural materials, and because their products were so much more expensive than many of their competitors, sales began to drop. Jean-Louis Dumas was the son of Robert Dumas, and he took over the company in 1978. And this change in command changed everything for the brand. As an innovative businessman, Jean-Louis dedicated his time as the head of the brand to diversifying their products and revolutionizing the designs by outsourcing the creations to experts in specific fields. He hired bootmaker John Lobb to design the shoes, started a sub-company, La Montre Hermes, to make perfect watches and several other designers to take over the men's and women's wear collections. Jean-Louis also focused their sales on three areas in which the business had always thrived. Leather goods, ready-to-wear, and silk scarves. As Jean-Louis was the fourth generation to run the company, he had learned from his predecessor's successes and mistakes. He realized that one of the most important creations the brand had ever made was the Kelly bag and he decided that they would create a new version of the bag for the modern age. In 1984, he met Jane Birkin, a famous actress and singer on a plane. What happened next was pure kismet. At the time, Jane Birkin was known for her ever-present wicker basket that she used as a handbag. However, on the plane, the bag wouldn't fit into the overhead, and the top fell off, spilling her personal items everywhere. At that moment, Jean-Louis had found his muse. The two sat together for the remainder of the flight while he started sketching handbag ideas that would suit her needs on a napkin. At first, the Birkin bag didn't have immediate success, but like the Kelly bag decades before, within the next 10 years, 
it became the absolute symbol of status around the world. The Birkin bag was and is a Veblen good, which means that its value increases with demand. There is no set schedule as to when they will be produced or how many will be in circulation, which means there is a waiting list to get your hands on one, making it all the more exclusive. As well, the extremely high price tag of the Birkin makes them ideal for those who want to showcase their wealth and for handbag collectors who want to own the best of the best. Today, you cannot get your hands on a Birkin bag for less than $11,000 and some of the more unique options cost over $1 million. But that is not the only reason why the brand is still so successful. Overall, the company has been able to adjust to the current times for almost 100 years. Their dedication to creating unique and perfectly made pieces with the best possible materials has ensured that they stay at the top of the list when it comes to high-end fashion. In fact, since 2013, when yet another generation of Dumas Hermes men took over the business, the financial success of the company has increased more than it has in almost half a century. It's safe to say that Hermes isn't going anywhere. The sky's the limit for this once small harness and bridle company, started by the young Theory Hermes, who loved to work with leather.